As a young toddler, he likely spent hours staring at the vast expanse of the night sky. The twinkling dots scattered randomly and aimlessly throughout the black sky floating high above have not enraptured just your, your imagination, but the imagination of the most pensive minds in history. Humanity has invented stories about the celestial glitters that seemingly are suspended high up in the air. With the evolution of our knowledge, we uncovered the secrets of the universe and discovered what we now call the star. But what is a star? And how does it die? A star is a humongous ball of churning hot plasma that is one of the most common celestial bodies present in the universe. The sun, the closest star to Earth, is around 100 times wider than the Earth, meaning that it would take over 1.3 million Earths to fill it up. The structure of a star can be thought of as an onion shell with an atmosphere, a photosphere, the convective zone, the radiative zone, and the core at the very center of the structure. All stars are capable of releasing an amount of energy equivalent to octillions of the deadliest nuclear warheads that humanity can unleash. Stars are not created from new matter. Rather, the same atoms that were created during the Big Bang are recycled over and over. A giant cloud of gas and dust is known as a nebula, or a protostar. Though this cloud is spread out, over time gravity will slowly clump it together. If the nebula coalesces into a large enough clump, the nebula collapses under its own gravity, igniting the center into a star core. Not all ignited nebulae are considered stars, though. If the newly formed celestial object is less than 0.075 solar masses, the object is known as a brown dwarf. Brown dwarfs are a hazy category between giant gas giants and stars, being 13 to 90 times the mass of Jupiter. Research is still ongoing about them. 90% of stars in the universe are classified as main sequence stars, an umbrella category for stars when plotting stars' luminosities and temperatures. Over time, though, stars will evolve into categories outside of the main sequence, depending on factors including their mass and size. Stars are supported by two opposite forces, gravity and radiation pressure. Because of their incredible mass, stars risk gravitational collapse. The cores of stars are pressured to extreme densities, while temperatures are at the core reach the star's maximum temperature. Due to these insane conditions, the force binding atoms are broken, separating the nuclei and the electrons. We explain more of this process in our States of Matter video. The pressure of the core enables a process called nuclear fusion to occur. During nuclear fusion, two hydrogen nuclei are combined to form one helium nucleus and release energy and a cascade of fundamental particles. The energy released by nuclear fusion powers the star and counters the force of gravity. However, there is a limited supply of hydrogen atoms inside of the star. Eventually, the star will run out of hydrogen fuel, tipping the balance between gravity and radiation pressure. When this occurs, stars will end in different ways. Because of the nature of the cycling of energy inside red dwarfs, the smallest type of stars that have a mass between 0.08 and 0.6 solar masses, they will slowly use up their hydrogen fuel and turn into white dwarfs over trillions of years. The lifespan of a red dwarf is, lo is longer than the age of the universe, so no red dwarf has have finished their life cycles yet. Medium-sized stars such as our stun, sun, with a mass of 0.6 to 1.4 solar masses are massive enough to sustain helium fusion once the hydrogen has run out. Through a process known as the helium flash, the helium core contracts so violently that it vaporizes, causing the gas to rapidly expand. No longer bound by gravity, the outer layers spread to light-year-wide remnants known as a planetary nebula. 
The remaining core is a white dwarf, which is unable to generate any nuclear fusion. Over an extremely long stretch of time, white dwarfs will turn into black dwarfs, balls of nuclear remnants. Due to the long lifespans of white dwarfs, no black dwarfs exist in the universe yet. However, the most massive stars in the universe do not die so silently. The end of a massive star. The most massive stars have a mass have masses that can range from eight solar masses to hundreds of solar masses, with the most massive star, R136A1, being more than 300 solar masses. Once hydrogen runs out in giant's cores, the mass of the star allows it for it to fuse heavier and heavier elements. Hydrogen burns to helium in around 7 million years. Helium burns to carbon over 700,000 years. When carbon runs out, the star fuses it into oxygen over six centuries. Oxygen burns into silicon over six months, while silicon is fused into nickel, which decays into iron within a day. Because of the stability of iron, it requires energy to react. Thus, the star is no longer able to fuse nuclei, tipping the balance. When the iron core reaches 1.4 solar masses, known as the Chandrasekhar limit, the pressure inside of the core becomes so great that electron degeneracy pressure fails, and protons and ne- electrons are pushed to become neutrons. The process causes neutrinos to form. Without the electrons, the iron ball collapses into a ball of neutrons. The outer layers of the star collapse as well, at 25% of the speed of light, and bounces off of the neutrons, producing a humongous pressure wave. A neutrino is a fundamental particle, a member of the fundamental model of the universe known as the Standard Model, which we will discuss in a future video. Neutrinos are often described as ghost particles because of their rare interaction with matter, and are extremely low mass. Trillions are flying through your body right now with no effect on anything. Yet when the electrons combine with protons, they produce an uncountable number of neutrinos, around 10 to the 58, which contain high energy. Due to the extreme density of the collapsing core, the neutrinos are forced to collide with neutrons, and the core manages to capture some of the ghost particle's energy. The added pressure causes the collapsing star to violently explode in a supernova explosion. The neutrinos produced by the quantum mechanical reactions stream from the supernova are, and are actually the first sign of a supernova before the arrival of light. Only hundreds of a percent of the energy of a supernova goes into light, yet supernovae are able to outshine entire galaxies. One percent is released as kinetic energy, while the remaining is in neutrinos. Over tens of thousands of years, the atoms in the interstellar dust are recycled back to form new celestial bodies, repeating the cycle. The core is either a neutron star or a black hole. Conclusion The the stars in the night sky are not static dots of light, but dynamic spheres that evolve alongside the universe. There are still so many stories that we have not talked about yet, but at least we get to sleep well under a beautiful celestial artwork. There are only three weeks left until the release of the 2022 special video. We look forward to seeing you on Christmas.